We are live. Welcome to BWI Live. I'm Thomas Frank Carr, Sean Fitz, Ryan Snyder here on a Thursday, the end of February, which means uh, March and spring football are very literally just around the corner. Spring break is going to start the month coming up in just a little bit. But today, what we're going to do is preview the names, the faces, the things you need to know about what's coming up with the Nittany Lions as spring practice starts and the open window begins. There's a lot of stuff to go into this, so we're going to get to all of that on today's show. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, opinions, loud shouting that you want to do in the chat, it's open. You know, let us know what you have going on in your life. And let's find out what they have going on in their lives. Ryan Snyder, back from vacation. Ryan, how you doing? Good, man. Good to turn off the phone, take advantage of uh, the dead period. I need to do that more often, although, Sean, I don't know if you want me to do that or not, but uh, <laughs> no, it was good. Uh, I mean, it's it's funny. I check out just for like a week and, you know, I'm seeing all these guys set up March visits and all that, and I'm yeah, I'm scrambling kind of to catch up. It's just it's wild. You, you just kind of check out for a week and so much happens in recruiting. It, it's a dead period, but shoot, they got two commitments like it's it never ends. Uh, how was how was uh, Florida? Because it snowed here. Uh, not great, if I'm being honest. I, I, <laughs> Sean warned me that Tampa's not Miami. <laughs> kind of going into it, and yeah, it, it just rained a lot on the back half. And I mean, look, it's it, for me, it's just all about turning off the phone, right, and just kind of finding things to do with the kids. Because uh, you know that I was writing on the board the other day, man. Like that, that all. I, not pity, pity us, right? We have awesome jobs, but like that August to, to January grind is is a grind sometimes. And you have little kids and lots of weekend hours and you know visits and tracking guys down on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, don't always get the time to you know spend with the kids and, and the wife uh, on the weekend. So good for that, but no one cares about that. It's it's time for recruiting to in- pick up again. So. I always encourage you guys to be dads when the opportunity arises and yeah. there's something going on with the show. Go be a dad. We'll figure it out. And speaking of dads, Fitz, how you doing today? Great. I encourage you not to be one, you know, until you're ready, but that's your choice. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, uh, it, it, it's going well. Um, my dog's over here whining. My parents just left. My, I, we, my, my wife and I went to a concert last night. So my parents watched the dogs and my puppy loves my dad, which if you've been to a tailgate, you love my dad too. Like it's kind of this thing that he has. Um, but, uh, she's sitting over here whining and they just left. So I don't know if you pick up any of that on my residual mic, but, uh, no, we're, we're back. We're ready to talk some recruiting. We got, uh, you know, it's a dead period. And I know Ryan went away. There was a couple of commitments. They came back and then there was another commitment. So there's plenty to talk about right now, even though, you know, no visits until March. Uh, and essentially once they get rolling in spring practice, that's when you, the, the recruiting news will start to flow a little freer as well. Yeah, Brian, I actually wanted to get your uh, thoughts on Lyric Samuel, who was the latest Mm -hmm. uh, Nittany Lion commit. I know uh, you haven't had a chance to give your thoughts. So what do you think? How how do you think that this worked out for the Nittany Lions with their first receiver in the class of 2025? Important. Yeah, obviously receivers, important position. Everybody knows that. Probably one of the most underrated kids in the class right now. Uh, Just just when you look at maybe his offers and rankings. And and, I think if you're a fan from the outside looking in, and, and you look at some of the other guys who have visited, right? Uh, it, it's, I think he's considerably underrated right now. Of course, I think on three is going to be moving him up here at some point. We'll see kind of where he stacks out. But, uh, you know, legit six, three and a half, six, four. We have him on his profile. Good size. Camped at Penn State last year. So they really know, you know have a solid understanding for, you know, what he can do athletically. And I think that was massive for Penn State uh, and, and solidifying this commitment, right? Because, while a lot of other schools were interested, see the film, they, I don't think they had all the background information that Penn State had, and that that allowed them to go all out. You know, they got them on campus what seven times. I mean, that's that's incredibly impressive, and uh, you know, it, it made them confident enough to to take him without you know any, any questioning or, or wanting to learn more. So I think he's going to end up being one of these guys that when we get to the end of the class, he stacks up higher than maybe some fans think right right when he committed. I think he's a really good prospect, probably one of their top three or four five guys right now in my opinion uh fits with that in mind i know we've talked about this but just big picture overview like good bad indifferent where does penn state stand with this class heading into spring which we're going to get into so where's the starting point for them right now yeah i think it's good i I think with samuel um you know we've, we've had a couple of these shows lately where we're talking about guys coming on and we're like yeah, maybe they'll be about ranked as this. Maybe some guys will drop or whatever. 
Um, but I think Samuel's the guy that we see as a riser. Like, and and I said it, I said it on the show earlier this week. It was like I expected him to be an 89, 90 and then go up. Um, for now, he's you know, he's he's in a pretty good spot. And we haven't done the full uh on 300 uh update for 2025 yet. So he is a four star, he'll be in the on 300. It's just a matter of like slotting there, which is why he doesn't have a I don't think he has a position rank or a, a mm-hmm. st- or he doesn't have a national rank. I know that, but I'm not sure where he fits in the position wise. So that would explain kind of the, dif- the the difference between what we have on three and then the on three industry ranking, which has which is unchanged because we haven't put any of those those numerical rankings in. So I think that that's important to point out. I think I think he's good. Like I, he's one of my favorites in the class right now, um, and I think he's going to continue to get better as they refine it. Another thing that I've talked about on the board, but I haven't talked about here. You look at his offer list, and it's not big. That's by design with Erasmus Hall, uh, Danny Lamberg, that staff there. They kind of sit on offers, if that makes sense. And in, in, an, in an era when schools are offering 400 kids, um, that that doesn't add up to the tape. So what we hear with Erasmus Hall, hey, if you have a relationship, if you get in there and you actually talk to the kid and don't just like throw out free candy, um, you know, that then – then they will go ahead and announce the offer and everything like that. So he's listed with five offers. I'm going to say very confidently there's a lot more that, that to play than, than is just listed there. So I think that kind of gives a little bit more of an insight to what Penn State's going up against um, than you – because, you know, people are kind of fickle. They're going to hear Rutgers, Syracuse, Michigan State, West Virginia and think this kid is – you know, a, a low level regional recruit. It's not the case. So I'm, I'm very, very curious to see if any of those other offers come out. And, and this isn't just an, an Erasmus Hall thing. We talked about, um, uh, who was it? Was it uh, Luke Reynolds was a guy that uh, really blew up after his Penn State commitment, just chose not to put those offers out there. I mean, Alabama came along, Georgia came along, like some big time schools came along. And he just decided to handle a little bit differently. So that's uh, that's kind of where we're we're looking with uh, with Lyric Samuel. I think it's a it's a good start for Penn State. They're going to have to continue to build. There are some very key names, very key names that are still out there um, that uh, are potential spring and summer decisions. We'll get into some of those here on the BWI Live Recruiting Show, and we're going to get to some of the things that Ryan wrote recently. I want to give him an opportunity to talk about some of the things that have interested him since he's gotten back. But the next thing that we need to tell you about is uh, your future. And how do I know about your future? Well, I know because of my perfect franchise, my perfect franchise and Andy Ludicky. He is a franchise consultant. So if you have extensive experience in business and you are itching to take control of your career, he might be able to help you. If you have extensive experience in one particular area, maybe it's just business. Maybe you understand an industry at a very deep level. Maybe you have a medical professional experience. He's very much all about the medical professional um, businesses that you can buy into. And whether things are booming in the economy, there's a downturn, it doesn't matter. There's always a place to invest where things are growing. And he has the personal knowledge and experience to manage franchises and helps you to navigate all of these things, including some of the things that are not fun that I don't talk about a whole lot. Um, last time we had a conversation with him, he was talking about he had to fire a friend of his, somebody he was very close with because the business wasn't going well. So he has insight into the mistakes you can make as well. And he lets you know all of this stuff up front during the process that he puts you through with My Perfect Franchise. So if you're a person like one of our Blue White Illustrated message board members who bought into a paint business, you can give him a call. That's for everyone listening on the podcast. If you're here on the YouTube channel, you can see it with your eyeballs. Or Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net. And as always, BlueWayIllustrated.com is a great place to get into contact with him because he's on the message board. You just have to message him on the message board and you can have that conversation. Each week during um, the, the, uh, the message board, we put up a thread of the show and in the thread you can find the information you can contact him there so check all of that out and thanks again to andy for being a longtime sponsor of the bwi live recruiting show so ryan getting back to some of the storylines for this spring you wrote something earlier this week about deshaun burnett and how amani christian you've mentioned this before Mm-hmm. There's more for Penn State to have a presence there with this uh, up and coming school. So, so what do you want to tell people here on the show about? Yeah, j- just it's a school to keep an eye on, guys. <laughs> I mean, point blank. I, I think David Davis, kind of a, a 2026 running back prospect, that's kind of gone under the radar. Not, not under the radar. I just don't think I have maybe talked about him as much as I should be. Uh, had an injury this past season, didn't play 
you know, as much as I think what he played seven of the 12 games, somewhere around there. But just the more I've dug on him, the more I've learned on him. You know, I, I think he's a, a real, I mean, he's already a four star prospect, but a, a kind of guy that, you know, should be in the on 300, you know, maybe even the top half of the on 300, you know, a player Penn State's really going to push hard for here, uh, I, I think, next year. And, and that's, you know, of course, even already having Masai Mickens committed uh, at running back. But, you know, beyond that, even, you know, Gabriel Jenkins is a good looking prospect. Cornerback safety. We'll see. He's only 2027. 20, they just added Carter Bonner. You know, he was at uh, was it Shady Side Academy. He just transferred into Monty. So it's just a, it's a fast rising, you know, private school in Pittsburgh that I think Terry Smith's really developing a good relationship with the with the coaches and the staff there. And, you know, that, you know, give Leroy Johnson and the staff a lot of credit because they're 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 getting the attention of some top prospects out there. So just kind of. Wanted to mention David Davis, wanted to mention, you know, Jenkins and Bonner and and just kind of get it out there that, uh, you know, if, if you're going to go out and watch Deshaun Burnett this year, he's far from the only Penn State uh, prospect to watch because all three, you know, all three, of course, with with Burnett four, uh, all those guys hold offers from Penn State. There's others coming up through the ranks as well. It, it's, you know, quick rising school and that's not going to be Central Catholic right away, uh, but they've, they've got some talent coming through the ranks. Uh, Fitz, what are your thoughts on the situation with Pittsburgh recruiting and can Penn State get even more from that area? Because they've done very well, as we talked about here on the show, but it sounds like they can, they could, there's more to plumb on that side of the state. It's funny, Ryan mentioned that they're trying, you know, Terry Smith's trying to continue that relationship. It seems like schools in Pittsburgh right now are, are developing their relationship with Terry Smith. It's, it's, it's very right. much the flip side because uh, Terry is so entrenched out there and they've done a really nice job. We talked about it on the show after Burnett uh, committed, of course, Alex Tash from out there, uh, Brady O'Hara. You, you've got a bunch of guys, Tyke Hayes uh, from Western Pennsylvania, Penn State's uh, – Short of saying locking things down because you never truly lock anything down, Penn State's done a really nice job in Western PA. And, uh, yeah, they continue to, to to funnel these guys through. That means getting them up for camps, getting them up for basically any visit. You know, uh, Team Evolve is is huge out there, and that's a big training base. We saw some a little bit of an online spat between Pitt people, Penn State people, and it's just uh, – <laughs> You know, it's 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 fun to it's it's fun off season banter. Uh, it's it's always always a good time. So Penn State doing extremely well in Western Pennsylvania. I don't think it's a secret that Terry Smith is the is the the catalyst behind that. Um, but it's about the effort that they've put into it. And I think you saw this. I mean, this is probably five or six years. Like they there was an investment made into getting into Pittsburgh, getting back into Pittsburgh, and being a, for lack of a better word, cooler program. Like, uh, you know, Pitt is a city program. Penn State is a country program. City Mouse, Country Mouse. It's it's not for everyone, but Penn State has made it so that it is for everyone in Pittsburgh. And I think that that's a, that's a big thing that you've looked at in the last several years. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting uh, way to think about it. And uh, I guess if you've grown up in a city, you, you have that perspective. <laughs> I think they pretty much maxed out what they can do in 2025. I mean, is, mm -hmm. Who are we not thinking of that they're still pursuing? I don't think there's too many guys. I mean, I think the five guys they got for 2025 is, you know, those are the five guys they really wanted, put it that way. So I don't see too many others that they're going to add from Pittsburgh for 2025. And that's kind of why I was hitting on David Davis and, you know, all these other guys coming up through 2026 and 2027. I didn't mention Larry Moon, who's, you know, at Aliquippa, but he's another guy who's going to be a top player. So uh, we'll, we'll see where things go. I'm, there's always guys who emerge down the road, you know, maybe a little camp or something like that. But right now, I feel like they got the five guys they really wanted in Pittsburgh. We're uh, we're about to move on to our spring recruiting preview. Be preview before we do that, before I take my hands off the wheel and let you guys drive the show. Any other last uh, news, notes, things that have happened in the last week that intrigue you that you want to mention before we get on? That's all the stuff I had, but I just, you guys know infinitely more, and a lot of it is up here. So I wanted to make sure if there's something you wanted to talk about before we get on to kind of the that portion of the show, you have an opportunity to. So, uh, Ryan, you got I saw anything? Andrew in the chat mention Brandon Finney. I mean, I'll just, I'll hit on him quick. I, I think, obviously, with the McDonough relationships, you know, Kenny Sanders, obviously, I think most Penn State fans understand those ties and how that's really helped Penn State over the years. Yeah, you would think Penn State's going to be in a good position there. The difference between him and Exner, though, is is he's really just now kind of taken off. I mean, his his offers, like, did they at least doubled, maybe almost tripled, you know, in, in that January to February rank. So he's kind of just, I'm not saying just getting started, but I think he's he's got to go out and see more of those schools. And, you know, obviously, Andrew, you probably read the story I posted this morning. He's, I think this spring will be really important for him. But, of course, 
those McDonough ties, I mean, <laughs> if uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where he stands maybe at the end of April, but you know, I could absolutely see us putting in a pick for him at some point down the road. It's they pretty much have gotten every guy they've wanted out of McDonough over the last however many years. And of course, there's been some other guys who've gone elsewhere, but the guys they really push for, and Brandon is going to be one of those guys as well as Exner. I mean, they what are they hitting on like five for five, something like that? It's it's been pretty good. It's, it, it I know he's listed as a cornerback, but could he play receiver? I would love to watch this kid play receiver a lot more. There's a lot of fun stuff here on film if you're watching it on the YouTube channel. I think he could. Um, I think he he profiles as a guy that could be like a draftable corn. Like a, he's got he's got all those you know the length and all that kind of stuff that you really like to see and the speed. Um, but I, you know he's a pretty good athlete. This is a guy that he popped on the 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 radar as a freshman. Somebody mentioned him to me down there. Said hey, just keep a keep an eye on this kid because he can run. And th and that's what we're seeing right now in terms of this time in the calendar. We are separating, especially defensive back receiver. We're separating the guys who are really good players, and there's nothing wrong with being really good players, but from the guys that are really good players and can run. There was a, a kid that put Penn State in his top list this week, fairly highly regarded, can't run. Like there, I mean, there, there, there's a there's a there's an, a level of athlete that you need to be to, to compete at this level, especially with the way that Penn State's been recruiting corners. Um, and it's different than just being a heck of a football player. And again, nothing wrong with that. But this is the time of year where you separate the guys who are really good players, really good athletes from the guys who are next level athletes. And that's what Penn State's looking for. And I think Brandon Finney is right in there. It's it's yeah. interesting. He's winning track meets. He's got really, really good um, sprinter times. Um, maybe not elite sprinter times, but like if you put, if you take into account that he is, Actually, 6'2", 185. He is a football yep. player. Those times are fantastic. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, schools have taken notice. Georgia offered last week. I know that, uh, you know, Maryland has been big in this one. Ryan, I think you Oregon just, just offered. Up. Yeah. Oregon just offered two days ago. Yeah, that's that that, that seems good. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I know you just wrote a story. I didn't get a chance to read it yet. But Penn State uh, hosted him on campus this uh, this winter. And going back to the McDonough thing, you said it. They, they haven't lost many that they've gone after hard and the ones that they've gotten have had tremendous experience. Like yeah. that, they, it's not been a situation mm -hmm. where you've missed many. Um, what do you got? Uh, Devon Ellis is coming back for another year. Of course, Curtis Jacobs going to the draft. Um, Mustafer had a great experience. You know, Mason Robinson's just a freshman. So it's, it's too soon to judge that one. But like all these guys that have come through and I, I know I missed one. Um, Hi, Dennis then, Sutton, probably the best one of them all. <laughs> that's bad. That's really bad. Um, Boy, especially for me. I haven't been pushing that one for years. Um, <laughs> That's usually me. I'm usually yeah. the one that would do that. Anyway, well, I, I was just going through and I'm just like, because uh, I, I had Mason Robinson on my brain the whole time yeah. and I was just trying to talk around it and filibuster <laughs> and it didn't come to me. So then I just said, Dennis Sutton, the best one of them all, I think, possibly, uh, unless Curtis blows up at the combine, which could be very possible as well. Um, yeah, it's it's been a pretty good run and Penn State has has taken care of those guys and that matters for that coaching staff down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, either way, just looking at him on film for two minutes here, he can run and he's got great, like, athletic skills outside of just speed. He's boundy, he's bouncy, he's got great pad level as a corner, like he can do so many different things. And his length, even not knowing the numbers here, like just seeing him for the first time, awesome length. So either position, I feel like it, I put up his... uh his recruiting situation, not a part of the initial on 300 here. He's going to be like, this is a dude that's got super talent. Ryan, you were going to say something before I interjected. I, I kind of feel like the points you're making there are why Penn State likes him as a corner, though. You know, because yeah. he can track well, he can move quick. I mean, like, it's it's easier it's easier to play wide receiver than it is to play corner. You know what I mean? So it's it's that's all. It just kind it's easier of moving forward there. than it is moving backward. So Correct. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, we'll see. He's certainly a player who is... Fast rising, though, uh, no doubt about it. I, I expect him to be a corner. Feels like Penn State's pretty firmly in that boat, but uh, certainly a guy who's moving quick and someone we're going to be talking about more and more. So let's move on to our spring recruiting preview. And I always like to do this for people who are new to the channel. And if you're following recruiting or you're just getting into recruiting, there's a lot to know. So Ryan, please just kind of give us the uh, the overview of the timeline that we're talking about here and when these visits mm -hmm. will start and the importance of them in the recruiting process. Kind of give us the, the groundwork for what we're going to be talking about when we get to the names here in just one second. 
Yeah, there's uh, what about 10 days or so left in the dead period. It goes until March 3rd this year. March 4th will be the first day that visits open up. But of course, uh, Penn State spring break is that first week of March as well. So for Penn State, it's really looking at March 12th, right around when they start spring practice. That's when you'll start seeing guys trickle on campus and it'll go uh, up through the blue white game, uh, which, of course, is April 13th this year. So a lot of Saturday visits, a lot of guys coming up. Uh, you know, even during the week, you'll have a couple guys here, a couple guys there, you know, watching practice. Pretty much, if you look at Penn State's practice schedule, that's when you're, we're going to expect guys to be on campus with, you know, probably what, March 23rd, April 6th, April 13th, of course, the Blue White game. Those will be the heavy weekends, probably, probably March 16th as well. Um, you know, those Saturdays, you'll, you'll probably see 20, 30 plus guys, or at least history suggests that that's, that's kind of what we'll see. And Ryan, we're, we're look, looking forward to the take of Penn State's spring break ruining the early, early visit window. Uh, <laughs> so get those polished up every year, a yeah. couple of weeks here because you know Penn State's Penn State's administration is trying to ruin recruiting. So that's uh, <laughs> that's what we're looking forward to. But well, no, we already know that with the uh, ac academic calendar in January, like it's just it's all in uh, con conspiring to stop Penn State from getting transfers cool. and recruits. Yeah. Well, now you make it sound like we're being serious here. So uh, I think I think I think Penn Sorry, State's my, acting, my is, acting skills are just too good. That's it. Yeah. Think, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think Penn State staff is very happy with that being spring break. They get a break right before spring practice gets rolling. All these guys, um, you know, it's missing that first week isn't that big of a deal. So unless the there's first a global thing pandemic, and then that comes back to bite. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's it. Or yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I've, the, the first section I got here is kind of broken up into guys we want to watch um, and then players that make the most sense. And I think that those are kind of overlapping. So let's start with why we're watching the players that we have here to start. Uh, Fitz, uh, who's a player you're watching closely this spring and why? Um, Matt Zolders. I think this is a very important way to start. Um, Penn State obviously has a commitment from Beckham Kritza in, as from a quarterback in Beckham Kritza. Um, but I think that Mads Olders is the top guy, and I think they've treated him as such. We talked about it on the show a little bit or earlier this week when with Matt Zollers and Malik Washington, two fantastic prospects in your backyard. I mean, it, Chris is a good player, good prospect in Colorado. I think that changes changes the math a little bit there. Zollers is a guy they've been on from the start. Like it sometimes it happens when these guys get out there and they start picking up offers. And I know he had a couple offers before Penn State came along, but Penn State's been serious on him for a long time. So I think that this is certainly one to watch. He's going to get out of basketball season, visit some schools, Penn State in that top four, um, along with Georgia, Missouri, and Pittsburgh, where his brother plays as well. So very, very important this spring. The quarterback dominoes being what they are, would not be shocked if you know he was off the board in the next couple of months. But there's still work to be done here for for every school in that in that mix. Ryan, coming to you. Who's a who's a player you're interested in? Who are you watching closely, and why? Zoll, I mean, Zoller's is certainly the top guy. There's no doubt about that. As far as someone who I think will probably be committed, you know, sometime maybe a little after the blue white game, something like that. Uh, without a doubt, you know, he's he's the one I would have circled more than anybody. Uh, as far as somebody else, Michael Carroll is really interesting to me because, of course, top top one fifty or so offensive lineman, Penn State legacy prospect. You know, there's a lot of things there that bode well for Penn State, but but Michigan is also very intriguing to him, and I, and I think the Wolverines are going to give Penn State an absolute battle here. What's interesting, and why I point him out as far as spring goes, is throughout most of his recruitment, and even now, he still will tell you that he's likely leaning towards official visits, which of course would take place in June or so. But he's also been open about the fact that the pressure is building on him and, and that he's you know really starting to feel it. Of course, that, that talk we had was a little was a couple of weeks ago. That was in January, and that's when all the coaches are coming to the school. So it's it's a hectic month, and you know, maybe he feels a little bit different now. But I do feel like he's been to Michigan enough, I think three times, been to Penn State, I think double that, probably about six or so, that those it just wouldn't shock me if he comes back to Penn State once, back to Michigan once and decides maybe sometime in April, because I, I, I feel like those two have firmly put themselves as a team to beat. And when you look back over the years at so many guys, I can point to that said, yeah, you know, definitely planning to do my official visits. And then they already have a pretty good understanding for who their top schools are around now. And, you know, they end up making a move in late March, April. So keep an eye on Carol. Uh, Penn State has a real battle on their hands with this one, though. I, I don't I don't know if I'd put it quite in the Anthony Sacker range where it was kind of becoming clear that Penn State's probably not the team, 
but I, I really think it's pretty much 50 50 here. It wouldn't shock me at all if he went to Michigan and Penn State knows they got to push hard. Fitz, what do you think? I think a couple of things. I, I, this is one of those kids you can make the argument for or against. I mean, you see he's a Penn State legacy in-state kid. So you kind of wonder, you know, what's it going to take to get him where he needs to be from Penn State perspective. Michigan, he's very high on. Of course, they just had the coaching change, but his, his guy there is now the head guy there. So that, that mm -hmm. probably helps Michigan a little bit in that sense. Very interesting recruitment in the sense that we thought from the start that he would – try to enjoy the process. Like this wasn't a kid that was ever going to make an, uh, an early decision. Um, now it seems like some of the pressure is getting to him. And, and this is a, a story that we've seen play out dozens of times, Ryan, we've done this over the years. This is not, this is um, same plot, different, different characters here. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be interesting to see if he can make it to there. Um, I tell you what, June does not seem like it's that far off, but in the recruiting landscape, I mean, four months, Three and a half months. Is Every a, day of text messages. It's an and, so we're going to see what lot. happens and see what happens in in April because I think those are the key visits for Michael Carroll. Um, with respect to the offensive line class, with Penn State having Brady O'Hara and Owen Alcini on board, um, it's hard to say. Yeah. Michael Troutman. Oh yeah, and Troutman. Right? Yeah, I knew I was forgetting something. Thank you, uh, and Troutman as well. How important is Michael Carroll? You know, the, the ties to the program, I think, are important from an emotional standpoint. But uh, we've also, I feel like, identified a, a number of players that have a lot of talent that Penn State is talking to at the moment. Some of them we'll talk about here in a minute. So I feel like Michael Carroll has, I don't want to say outsized importance in this situation. But do you think that, um, I, I guess, Ryan, how important is he to this particular class to land um, for the offensive line to maintain this momentum that they have? I think we need to put O'Hara to the side when we're having this discussion because I, I think – do I think he's going to end up being an offensive tackle? Yeah, probably. But right now I'm not sure Penn State looks at that situation as they have three offensive linemen. I think they look more so as they have two offensive linemen and, and O'Hara's kind of just – we always have one of those like wild card, you know, a couple guys who we just kind of put over here as athletes. I'd put him in that category at the moment. But to get to your point, Carroll – yeah, I think he's absolutely one of the most important guys. He's he's really grown well. Uh, it's kind of a swing guy now. Like, yeah. I, I think I can see him maybe starting as a guard, moving the tackle down the road. Uh, you have those family ties. He's camped multiple times as well, so they know what he brings athletically. I would definitely have him in in, in the mix as you know, top three, four guys uh, remaining. And of course, you have Malachi Goodman. You got a couple others that I think are up there pretty high. But the fact that he's a swing guy, you know, they have a true tackle, they have a true center now. I think they, you know, they still like that versatility and he really brings that. Uh, Fitz, any thoughts or do you want to move on to the next? Yeah. One? I mean, the, the player and the talent is, is paramount here, but also like the, the optics here, this is a legacy prospect that's from true. in state. You don't want to lose him to one of your top rivals. And that's, you know, something that, you know, nobody's a must get, like there are no must gets in recruiting. That's a, that's a word, a phrase that's thrown around way too much, but in terms of like high priorities, like there's a reason this kid is, high on the list at guard at tackle wherever you want to put him and he's a personality fit like this is not a guy that you're trying to uh you know jam into the the the, the round hole or anything like that it's uh it, it's a personality fit for penn state it makes a lot of sense he is a penn state michigan notre dame type kid like that is i think that's what we've we've come off and uh and have discovered over the last couple of months and again he keeps getting better and that's something you want in your your offensive line room yeah and it's something um Ryan wrote a great article about Peter Gonzalez having to earn his scholarship. Um, I know it was later on in the timeline because of injuries and, and et cetera, et cetera. But this is also a guy in Michael Carroll who, who didn't get an offer right away, right? He had to come and camp. He had to show that he was a, a Penn State prospect. And we got to see up close. He very much aced that test and has gone on to, you know, be a national prospect in a lot of ways. And a guy that a lot of people are aware of at 6'6", 300, um, has really developed, developed very well. Um, Right. Next guy you want to highlight. Um, can I suggest we stay with offensive line and pair Michael Carroll with Malachi Goodman? What do you, yeah, what do you want well, to talk about? <laughs> so my question, this was the one guy I wanted on the rundown. Did I miss anything last week with Goodman? No. Okay. I, I didn't know if there was a reason, like a specific reason he's on the list, but I, I would absolutely have him as one of Penn state's most important remaining offensive tackles right now. Uh, right now, I, if you look across the, the region, how many tackles are they going to get? I mean, Matty Augustine just committed the other day. Of course, uh, Will Black is already committed. Like, there's not too many guys. Of course, Jalen Matthews is still out there, but he's already decommitted from Penn State, so I don't 
really expect much there. So when you look at just the region, he's the – and not saying they have to get a guy from the region, but usually that's how it works out more often than not. I mean, he's, it has to make him incredibly important. So I think getting Alcine was, was massive for them. If they could get Goodman, it would be big. But, man, he's really taken off with offers. I expect him to certainly go out and visit quite a few schools uh, in the spring. I think Ohio State was one of those recent offers that I know stood out to him. So it's not going to be easy. Penn State has the early foot in the door, which is good. They got him on campus twice now so far. But, uh, man, if you look at kind of how he has taken off in January, um, it's it's not going to be easy. Fitz, this is the guy who I think is another rising prospect. You can see here doesn't have rankings by two of the four pro, uh, two of the four industry standards. But as as Ryan just said, uh, colleges are taking notice and giving him offers. Yeah, it's uh, it, he's one of the top players on the board. Like uh, I don't think there's any way to get around that. And I added him to this list. So Ryan, sorry for for throwing that grenade in front of you. <laughs> um, but no, this is an important spring because he hasn't been many places. You look at some of these guys, how their recruitment plays out, and you see that. Some of these guys have been to, you know, lo localish schools. And then all of a sudden, these offers come in. Ohio State comes in. Georgia comes in. Florida comes in. And they want to see these schools in their, over their spring break or something like that. And then things open up. So very important for Penn State to get him back on campus this spring. Very important for Penn State to sort of re-solidify that they were the, the, the first big dog in on him and uh, try and keep him home because it's going to be a, a challenge. I mean, the, 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 we're getting to the point. There's not too many layups out there. Like you got to hit some, you got to hit some shots down the stretch. Uh, shout out to Penn State basketball, by the way. That was an awesome win last night. I meant to talk um, about that to start the show. I'm sorry. well. Nate's not here, and you know Nate. Uh, he wants to have it all for himself. So you guys will talk about that at some <laughs> point. Um, but uh, no, Malachi Goodman is is definitely a guy that you look at as a, as a prime target for Penn State, and the spring is going to be very important for him. Whether that means like, I don't, I don't think he's ready to commit or close to being ready to commit. But like this is a this is a time to set the table for Penn State. Uh. Ryan, unless you have anything else, I want to go to the last guy, and I'm going to let whoever put uh, Andrew Olish on the uh, rundown. Let him. Take I mean, it. it's Sean's guy. I put him on the rundown, but I Sean, put him on the rundown. That's your guy. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. No, this is this is an important target for Penn State. Of course, Lincoln Cure is still, I think, the top guy, and probably a plus one guy if we're being honest here. Um, just uh, from from Kansas, but he also is from Kansas, and Kansas State's the heavy favorite there. Uh, Andrew Olish has developed and he has earned his offer. And, and when I say earned, he's gotten, he's done everything that they've asked. He's gotten bigger. Um, he's, he's got that tape that, uh, that looks pretty good. And he's got those athletic numbers that look really good. So this is, I mean, this is a guy, he, I don't think he's ranked by, uh, by on three yet. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have his profile open right now. He's not, I'll get he's that not. for you in a second. He's not, but he's not. I would not be shocked. He's a four star in the next rankings. Like if, and probably a low four star, but still like kid from Southern Lehigh. I mean, you don't see too many four-star prospects up there, um, but he's got the numbers to back it up, and he has steadily gotten himself into a, I don't want to say gotten himself into a better situation with offers, but Florida recently offered, Miami recently offered, of course, some some of the usual suspects are around there as well, but like for a kid from from that area to get some of those, uh, those big-time Florida offers and actually have those schools pushing for you, I think it says something about the level of prospect he is. So I think I think Penn State's in the driver's seat. I think Penn State has a great shot of getting him. But, you know, it's it, it's easier than, you know, in, in in honor of NCAA 25 coming back, that, that kid that you offer the scholarship and he commits right away, it's, <laughs> it's not uh, not happening here with, the, with Andrew Ola. So I think spring, summer makes a lot of sense for him. And he's fun to watch, Ryan. Like these are some fun highlights. And Penn and State has be. all the should, all the should be. like he should yeah. be better than everybody out there. No, no doubt about it. And he is. So that's one thing that we keep going. It's, it's like the Tash film uh, in Western Pennsylvania. Like it's not it's not top of the top um, competition, but he kind of torches the guys that he's against. But I, I'm just going to add. I mean, Penn State. He's camped multiple times. Did he camp three times last year or two twice? I, I know at least, at least two twice because yeah. he was back. He was back for the mini camp uh, there at the end of July as well. Sure, sure. Yeah, I thought it was like June twelfth, and then he came back for whiteout at the end, and then yeah, came back right. for even that. I think that's what it was. But anyway, my point with that is, you know, three camps and and a little over what was a six week period or so. Penn State knows everything about him athletically. They really wanted to just kind of check out the film this year and see where, you know, how he progressed on some little things, and and you know they took the opportunity to offer right away couple other things with andrew one his dad's a penn state alum that should that should obviously help penn state uh, moving forward visited six or seven times already i think he visited 
I think he visited six or seven times since since those camps too. Since so that's a lot of visits. I mean, he was not on our radar at all before. No, a six two or a, excuse me, a four two shuttle at uh, at six five. So right, yeah, two camps in June, camp in July, uh, Iowa game, West or excuse me, West Virginia game, Iowa game, Michigan game, Junior Day. Yeah, it says it says a lot there, and I I, I know it's just, I see what you're saying, Sean, with all those recent offers. Um, you know, and maybe he won't be a spring guy, but I also would not be shocked at all if he's committing during the blue white game. Yeah, yeah, which is traditionally in the spring. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that what we said? Okay. (laughs) Anyway, I'm confused. I must have missed one of your points. I thought you were saying like he's going to maybe take official visits because he got those recent offers, which it would make sense. I mean, it's cool to go check out Florida and Miami. What you want to do as a prospect, but yeah, I mean that's this we've we've seen this story before, and it's uh, right the spring game type of of decision. So Mm -hmm. you guys have outlined the why certain guys would make sense for Penn State and which ones you think make Penn uh, make sense for Penn State. Uh, But is there anybody else that you want to mention that you think would be a fit to commit maybe in the spring, like you mentioned with Olish as a possibility or somebody else just on the radar here that you want to highlight? Ryan, do you have anybody? Um, No, I think we misunderstood the conversation and we just <laughs> so perfect. Like I, I put I, I, just... I put on the rundown, I put Lincoln Cure on the rundown and and Jeff Exner. And Cure is mainly just from the perspective of uh I think Kansas State's probably the heavy favorite there, but Penn State might actually be number two and wouldn't be shocked at all if he does make it back to Penn State here in March or April. And uh, I, I think there's a really good relationship with Ty Howe. I think he's Ty's top guy. But it just feels like he's probably going to stay close to home there. So I wouldn't be surprised if he ended his recruitment, you know, maybe maybe by mid-April, just because he it sounded like he was pretty close to committing to Kansas State before uh, Colin uh, Klein went. To Thank you. Yes, yeah. correct. Thank you. Uh, so that's why I wanted to mention him. Penn State's really pushing hard to get him back on campus. So, so let's see uh, where things go. And then I mentioned Exner just because of those McDonough ties, just because of how often he's visited. I expect him to probably go see a few other schools. Uh, this spring, but when you look at the schools that he has visited so far, you know Penn State's clearly the the, the, the top program. It's all the regional schools, right? You know the, the Maryland's, the Rutgers, the West Virginias, the Pitts. I mean, Penn State is clearly the top dog of the schools he's seen so far. And you know, when you add in those McDonough ties, it just wouldn't shock me at all if he's another guy who just said, "Screw it," you know, let's let's make a move in in April. He's well, well known to uh, Penn State fans, too. Like, that's another one of those. I'm not going to say he's Michael Carroll, but fans have always asked about Jeff Exeter. What's up with him? How do you, uh, mm-hmm. So he's he's one of those, I think, emotional commits that that fans will be excited about if he decides to make that decision. Mm-hmm. Emotional commits, the best kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all are. If you go over the Blue White Illustrated message board, every single thing is fraught with meaning. And uh, there's a lot at stake for Penn State fans. And by the way, if you want to dive in deep into the world of recruiting, go to the message board, get the info, get the uh, stuff that doesn't make it all the way to the recruiting show. You can sign up right now. Sign up right now. We love you for supporting us here on the YouTube channel. So we're giving you an extra month to try out uh, bluewhiteillustrated.com. Use the code PSU1 when you sign up and you'll get two months for one dollar that's a special offer just for our podcast and our youtube listeners so um i know there's a lot of people that have come through the youtube channel to the site that are now lifers if you want to join them this is the time to do it because you're going to get all of this recruiting stuff and spring football all of the updates from sean fitz you know he wrote an awesome article yesterday about the uh, penn state offensive skill players quarterbacks uh the players that have stood out uh in spring football He's got the sources to get that information. So you can go get that information if you go over to bluewhiteillustrated.com and sign up. So the spring visit schedule, there's going to be hundreds of players that come across campus. There's going to be uh, a lot of them that we may not hear about again, but there are some big names and some notable players coming from not just the region, but across the country that we're going to talk about now. So Ryan, let's start us off. As always, you get to pick uh, who you want to start with. Oh, maybe Trent Wilson, you know, the guy we talk about all the time, <laughs> really good defensive line prospect. Uh, you know, Chad, Chad Simmons wrote a story yesterday, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Penn State, Ohio State, four visits set. And I'll leave the dates uh, behind the paywall for, for subscribers, but uh, not really a big surprise there. Oklahoma, I think, is the only one he hasn't visited yet. Uh, so we'll, we'll see where things go there. But uh, Ohio State it always felt like a team that should be in the mix. I think Florida State got him in January, and that seems to be a school that's rising. And 
Of course, Penn State's hosted them more than anybody else. So I like that Penn State. Oh, well, actually, I just said I wasn't going to give the dates away. But I'll say this. Penn State's getting it, in last. It's, it's been tweeted. You can do it. Okay, yeah. So Penn State's getting in for the blue-white game, which I think is in some ways good, some ways not, and just because of how many recruits will be on campus. But I just think him going to those other schools and then you know finishing with Penn State, considering how often he's been to Penn State, it just gives the staff a good opportunity to you know remind him you know why the Nittany Lions are – I'm not going to say the team to beat, but certainly top two, if not the team to beat. I mean, you, you look at what he's done so far, and you got to think Penn State's standing as well as anybody going to the round of spring visits. I will say, coming up the 13th is or the blue-white game, and I'm going to say it's good. Like, it's good. But if he comes up, like, the 12th and stays overnight, like, that yeah. is an eye-opener. Like, that, that is something that sort of changes the perspective on the visit, and it should help Penn State. I think it's, I think he's a guy that gets to officials, um, but I think Penn State standing pretty well. Like, Deion Barnes has done a really good job, and – They've sort of um, established that, yes, you're a big-time prospect, but also you can stay home and look at the guys that, that, that we've produced over the last couple of years. Penn State's defensive line has been really good. Like it, and, and, you know, we had this conversation sort of on the board this week about defensive end, how it's probably going to thin out after this year or next year. And, yes, it will because college football is cyclical. It's, uh, that's what happens. But um, it, Penn State has the ability to attract guys that can play, kind of, kind of play early, and also in the transfer portal, they've done a really nice job with with Evakiti, with Chop Robinson. You can keep pushing that to kids, or not even kids, but the, the transfers that are able to come through here. So while it probably will dip a little bit after Denai leaves, and I mean, and you know, Abdul Carter is going to play there now. So um, yes, that that that's inevitable, kind of. But at the same time, I think that they can restock there. Uh, who Don't wants to go next uh, with the next <laughs> player? There's there's a lot of interesting names on this list. Uh, you know what? Let's start. Let's stay with defensive tackle because this guy was fun. First time I got a chance to see him. Landon Rink. Uh, Fitz, are you good to get? Are you, are you uh, situationally? Yeah, I don't know go? anything about Landon Rink. I'm just going to no, tell you that right now. A, a Texas <laughs> prospect. Um, it's it's going to be uh, you know a, a tough pull considering I think. I think the Texas schools are actually after him. You can, you, you never know for sure because uh, they they recruit at such a high level. Like both Texas and Texas A and M are leading the uh, on three RPM, but they recruit at such a high level. So you don't know if this kid is six two two sixty. Like, is he exactly what they're looking for? And you could say the same thing about Penn State. Like, that's yeah. there's a lot of uh, six foot to six two defensive tackles that really haven't made it to Penn State's board, even though they're really good players here. But uh, he's a guy that uh, Penn State's been in contact with for a while, developed that relationship. There's there's a bunch of guys in Texas that I don't want to say Penn State's going to host a bunch of them this spring, but there there are guys that are going to stop by and uh, probably make an impact on it. You saw the the effort they put into Nigel Smith last year, yeah, uh, or last cycle, ended up at Oklahoma. But like you know, they're 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 a presence there. They're not going to get a ton of kids from there, but there are presence there that uh, that, that that makes sense. Um, uh, Max Granville is a defensive end from down there that Penn State really, really likes. Um, but that you know, you're just trying to you're punching up, obviously, in a in a state with uh with the I don't, I don't want to say like obvious premier in-state programs, and then Oklahoma's on top of that, and the SEC's on top of that. So like you're definitely middle of the pack to lower end of the the appeal scale for for Texas prospects, but they're you find the right kids and, and you can get them on campus, and that's uh that's certainly a possibility. And they've identified a lot of defensive linemen too. I think that that's kind of you outlined a couple of them. Uh, I just there's, think that's interesting. That a them. lot that's of them. The thing. There's there's more of them down there. That that <laughs> yeah. that is a good thing. There's there's more of them in Texas. Uh, Florida is good, but it's more of a skill player type haven. Um, you kind of got a little bit of everything in Florida. The Carolinas is a spot where they really do a good job with linemen, and uh, Penn State just hasn't been. I don't want to say active there, but hasn't been. Uh, pulling kids from, from down there. So it'll be interesting to see how that all works out. Of course, t they had TJ Parker committed from, uh, from Alabama a couple of years ago, yeah. or a couple of cycles ago that seems like forever ago. Um, but, uh, he's a good one. So you're trying to find prospects like that, that you can wedge your way. Like, I think that's probably a way, a way to put it. You wedge your way in for those guys and then eventually maybe get an official visit. Uh, Ryan. Well, me, uh, yeah, I want to, I definitely want to keep it. Hold on. I want to build on that because sure. we're going to talk about Khalid Lockett, by the way, another Texas player. I'm going to talk about him in a second, but Connor Cardi, I think is a good example of what you're saying there, Sean. He just was on campus here a couple of weeks ago and Penn state's building momentum with him. Good looking offensive line prospect out of Texas. So keep an eye on him. I, I think he's pretty, pretty high up there on, on trout wines, offensive guard board or interior guy. We'll say, um, I'm not sure if Penn State's absolutely going to get an official visit or not, but I, the visit last week 
or excuse me, last week, last month, went strong enough that I wouldn't be shocked at all uh, if they're able to get the, I think he's from Prosper, uh, back on campus here. Uh, maybe this spring, maybe for an official visit, we'll see. But I, I do think there's enough momentum there that that he's somebody we need to seriously talk about. Dorian Brew is another one. I don't think Penn, he's not going to end up at Penn State, but he's he's important uh, for Terry Smith and, and certainly a guy that he's pushing hard for. And then Khalid Lockett, I, I told you I'd mention. Uh, what is the – I know there was a visit date somewhere. I apologize. Is it March 14th, 16th? March 14th, like yes. that. Thank you. Um, really good wide receiver prospect. Camped at Penn State. I think he camped at Penn State. Definitely was at Penn State last year, I believe. I thought he yeah. camped. Um, but also he's got offers from everybody now. And, you know, it's certainly one of the, the most, uh, I, I think one of the most coveted, uh, wide receivers in, in the country. I mean, I, it's kind of interesting right, on three has them a bit lower. I'm actually looking at the rankings now, but everybody else basically has them as a top 10 wide receiver in the country right now. And Penn state, I know loves them a lot. So we'll see. Yeah. Maybe they'll get an official visit from him, but I'd be kind of surprised if I'm talking about these Texas guys, Connor Cardi's the one that stands out the most to me. Fitz, who you got next? Uh, well, the, we're going to stay on receiver because that's where everybody wants to talk about here. And I, and it's not really a date set type thing, but like national receivers are starting to come back around. You're going to see some guys setting up official visits uh, that maybe like the diehards will recognize the names, but you're being like, oh, okay. I didn't know Penn State was involved with this kid from California. Corey Sims popped up from Missouri. He had a really good visit when he was here uh, over the winter. Samari Reed, we've talked about from Florida. He's been up a couple of times. Philip Bell from California was in early as a prospect. And that's one of those things where you get some of these guys, like some of those groups from California that came in. I believe it was uh, the, the Cunningham group that uh, that came in with, with mm -hmm. Philip Bell involved. And, you know, maybe that has some stick power. And then, I keep going back to Taz Williams. Um, I think he's continues to rise up the board. This is a guy that plays in Texas, but is a Pittsburgh native. So like the roots are here and like, okay. So not to diminish what Penn state does, but to, for a kid from Texas to consider Penn state, you have to find either the, I don't want to say flaws, like maybe Landon rings six, one and a half. So maybe mm -hmm. Texas won six, four defensive tackles. I don't mm -hmm. know. But you have to find, you know, the sort of deficiencies and make that work. Whereas a guy like Taz Williams, it's got 55 offers or whatever it, it may be. You find the connections. You find how you can sort of, for lack of a better term, weasel your way into this recruitment. And I think that they've they've done a nice job. They got him on campus. And, and you know, he, he likes everybody that he visits. So it's not a surprise that he liked Penn State. Um, but he does have those connections. His father's, uh, you know, deep uh, has some deep Pittsburgh ties as well. So I think that is the thing to remember with these out of region prospects is some will set up visits. Some will, some will set up visits that don't have visits set up. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's one of those ones where you have to find the flaw deficiency, whatever the, whatever the knock might be and say, okay, Penn state can make this work. I, I would and, just add to that. I wouldn't, there's no flaws with Max Granville, but like kind of to add on what you're saying, his dad's from New Jersey. So like, yeah. that's another reason they kind of have a foot in the door there. There's family from New Jersey. Just to kind of add on to what Sean said. That kid is a statue. Like, speaking yeah. of no flaws, like, he he had that picture with, with Franklin. Like, he does not skip leg day. And he's a <laughs> – He's just he's, a – Hey, Ryan, Ryan's a defensive end. I don't know if you knew this or not. Uh, story uh, for another day, everybody. Anyway, okay. go on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, so who who else is on the list that you guys are interested in? Ryan, do you have another guy you want to talk about? Uh, I, I, would, we, I think we got to mention Onus Konobani. Uh London kid, right? Even we don't, we haven't right. talked about too many European guys in a while. Of course, he's he's over here now in the states. I believe he's in South Carolina. He was in Georgia, I believe. It came to Georgia originally, and now he's in South Carolina. But certainly one of Terry Smith's top cornerback prospects. Uh, set an official visit, so it's not a spring visit, but he did set an official visit, and that's kind of all out there publicly now. Uh, second weekend in June. Are they going to get him? I don't know. It's I, I'd be kind of surprised. It's it's I also love really this far film. down the road. I mean, they would be they would be very uh, fortunate to get his services. This dude, you know, we mentioned uh, a little bit ago, um, uh, Brandon Finney, kind of like that. Six two, super athletic, can play corner like this is a really great prospect. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see where things progress from there. But um, I mean, it's not going to be easy. He's been all over the place, too. I mean, he's taken a ton of visits. A lot of schools are interested. Uh, North Carolina is the other one who set an official visit, by the way. But uh yeah, I mean, he's he's been all over the place and won't be easy for Penn State. Go ahead, Sean. No, I agree. But the, the thing to remember here is, yes, he's in South Carolina, but the ties are not what they are for a typical mm -hmm. South Carolina kid. So he's been to campus before. Penn State's got a shot here. They've got a good relationship, and they recruited corners pretty well. Like, there, there's a market for, like, 
Penn State is in the upper echelon of cornerback recruiting, and it's just sometimes a little bit tougher to get those guys from out of out of state, uh, out of country in this case. But uh, he has set that official visit for June. Um, we're going to continue to talk corners. I know Ryan and I has had some off site discussions about how to. Uh, you know how to deal with these little boards that we're going to put up or whatever in the in the coming weeks but uh it's uh corners i think there's a lot of talent out there for corner and there's a lot of interest mm -hmm. in terry smith i mean playing corner for terry smith for sure for sure do we want to get to some 2026 guys to end the show just kind of the long distance view of who's coming to campus and who might be interested yeah, I mean, it's going to be busy. So, like, these names are just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's on there. Uh, Chad Simmons tweeted out KJ Ford, a defensive end from Texas, as, you know, we kind of had this conversation a couple mm -hmm. minutes ago, um, is going to be visiting on March 26th. And, uh, yeah, anytime that you can get out there and try and set an early relation or try and settle a, an early relationship with your coaches on campus, hey, that's uh, that's what you got to do. Dia Bell, the interesting one here, because yeah. I, think, I, I think Penn State, led i don't know if they still lead but i think penn state was at the top of the list he has visited a couple of times so far very high on what they are doing on offense um i'll just say that one more time yeah i know right um but uh, yeah. it's a um <laughs> it's a situation where he's impressed with what they, what they were doing i think i think they probably led when mike gersich was the offensive coordinator i haven't talked to him uh much outside of right after um, when Andy Kotonecki was hired. But, uh, you know, Penn State put a positive or got a positive relationship early and put a positive uh, uh, lasting impression in his head. So he's going to be back uh, in March as well. So this is a, a one of those 2026 prospects of the son of Raja Bell. We've talked about here before on the show. And uh, it's just uh, hasn't really changed much with with Andy Kotonecki. He's a at American Heritage as well, which is one of the top schools in Florida. So, you know, mm -hmm. it produces regularly high level talent. And if you're watching here on the YouTube channel, if you're not watching, if you're listening to the podcast version and you want to see the highlights of these guys, you can skip ahead, you know, to the same timestamp and watch some of the stuff. I love what I see from Dia Bell here. Um, young player, obviously, but still has a lot of really good tools and just like all the other Mike Yersich quarterbacks guys, he, he knows how to play the position. Like he's very good when you watch him process and then throw. And I just, I think whatever happens in 2026, like uh, that's a guy, even if he's six, one, he, he's um, a guy you're going to, I think you would take just no matter what, because he's got, he's got a lot of neck up talent. And, and we've said it before. Mike knows what he's looking, looking at when he's looking at quarterbacks. Like there's, uh, there's a lot of things that you can nitpick about his tenure here, but like in terms of like, finding guys and finding what he wants. He, he did a pretty good job. So uh, there's that. And to, just going back to what you said about him being young, it's way too early to, to earmark top 2026 20, quarterbacks. Like it's mm -hmm. like, we're still talking about 2025s and finding the top guy and finding the second, you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of growing to be done for a lot of prospects before between now and then they're going to get a bunch of those guys on campus in the spring. And of course at, at camp in the summer. And speaking of growing, hold on real quick, I got to add, like that 6-1 number, T. Frank, is from last year's camp, I believe. And his dad's Raja Bell, you know, NBA player. He was like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six or so. Yeah. So I, I'm not worried about size at all. I think I think he's he'll probably hit a growth spurt at some point. Yeah, uh, just generally, he's a little slight looking on film. You know, mm -hmm. it is young film. That's but what happens also... when you're a freshman and a sophomore, though. I mean, I right. can point out a thousand guys that, that look that way as underclassmen, and, you know, they grow into something totally different. Uh, there's a couple questions in the chat I want to see if you guys have interest in 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 addressing. And uh, while I point those out to you, Tom Mason says that's how I found BWI talking about coming here from the YouTube channel and uh, joining you. us over on the site. So Tom, appreciating you give us your stamp of approval and joining us over at Blue White Illustrated. Uh, Beach Wine Guy and Andrew McKinney have some questions in the chat. I want to make sure you guys are comfortable addressing any part mm -hmm. of that stuff. Ryan uh, uh, Lavar Jr. and Kamar Archie are the questions in the chat. I think they have a lot of interest in, in LeVar Jr. I, I'm i sure he's been on campus at some point, but like we haven't tracked any kind of like official recruiting visit for him. So as far as really kind of knowing where he stacks up size wise and all these different things, didn't camp or anything like that. It's kind of hard to say, you know, he's definitely a, a take or something like that, especially when you add in the fact that they basically, I mean, they have two absolute linebackers committed and I've been kind of calling it two and a half because Burnett could could play linebacker or defensive end. So the the room is already pretty full. But from what I understand, he's he's not like kind of like the rest of those guys, much more of a better athlete. I think Ty Jackson's the one that like if they're going to add a linebacker, Ty Jackson 
uh, out of Florida is the one that like I don't think they'd have any question about. They'll add him at any point uh, up until signing day. I, I think Ty Jackson's going to end up being the number one linebacker in the country, but we'll, we'll see where things go. I talked to Charles about it, by the way. Sean. Okay, <laughs> it's some insight there. <laughs> no, he, I'm not that great. He's really good, really good. It's just uh, I, that's a, that's quite a leap right there. And I Dude, agree. Watch he, him. He I is think a stud. Yeah, I think he's Penn State's top target. Uh, For sure, Lavar Junior. Uh, like I, I didn't really put much stock into that when the offer went out. Now the the thing that did catch my attention was they didn't offer Kino. Kino Arrington mm -hmm. is at Delaware now, um, who was at Lackawanna. So it's not a situation where like they're just going to offer all the lavar offspring um but it's uh <laughs> it, i think it's a situation where he is definitely on the board like and i'll say that like it's it, it's not a pity offer or whatever you want to call it, legacy offer whatever so um i think that he's definitely out there kamar archie's interesting we talked about this before uh what is he i don't know um really good running back film um i with two and a half linebackers on board, you're not going to get all of them. You're not going to take all of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see where he stands. Like, is he an official visit guy? I still, I still don't know. Uh, any last thoughts, guys? That's what we have here on the show. Uh, we've emptied the chat of, of questions from what I saw. Uh, but I always want to give you guys a, the last word about what's coming up this week, what you're thinking about, <laughs> what fans should know about. Uh, so Ryan, we'll start with you and then we'll end with Fitz. It's a dead period. I'm taking two more weeks of vacation. There you go. No, I'm just, I, <laughs> we're gonna have a bunch of guys planning visits in March. Yeah, we'll keep tracking that kind of stuff down. But you know, I'm gonna try and circle back with some of the committee guys the last couple of weeks. Michael Troutman, I gotta catch up with. Uh, really want to catch up with Lyric and, and some guys. So we're gonna be working on that kind of stuff. But still, another two weeks, really kind of two and a half weeks, where it's yeah, we'll, we'll get some visit dates and stuff like that. But not a whole lot going on. Once we get to about mid March, it's when everything will kind of take off. Fits. I agree, with, I, would agree, I agree with Matt, who says great insight today. I think I think this was a packed show, so I encourage you to like, subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe, tell, do all this kind of stuff that, that makes it easier for us to make a show for you guys and make a free show for you guys. Um, and then check out bluewhiteillustrate.com. Got some more notes coming from the team. Uh, probably not today, but uh, probably tomorrow. So like, there's uh, there's a lot going on, and we're, we're you know trucking all the way full speed until uh, spring break. We will talk to you uh, tomorrow. We've got the Penn State Wrestling Show coming up. Uh, they have Senior Day coming uh, this weekend, so we'll be detailing all of that. And, of course, if there's any other news and notes, any breaking news, some more insights that we want to talk about, check it out at Blue White Illustrated uh, here on YouTube. And as Fitz, always said, as Fitz said, subscribe. It helps us out a whole lot if we keep uh, growing the show and more people know about us. So we'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>